Ladies and gentlemen, the ever most handsome Logan Thomas of Living Life! Hell yeah. Hey y'all. Dude, thank you so much for joining. We appreciate it. For those that may not know you, sir, can you properly introduce yourself? Let me know whereabouts in the world you are at this moment. Plug and promote anything and everything. Yeah, so we are um, a metalcore band from Michigan known as Fleeting Life. And, you know, down in Florida, it was a very popular thing while I was at Full Sail that people would tell me to do the Michigan thing. So we're, like, from right there. <laughs> you know, I went to Full Sail also. Yeah, I know. That's fucking awesome. It's Full crazy. Sale, Small world. Right. Small world. <laughs> oh, what's, what's, what's all the social media links also for the band? Yeah, um, so Instagram fleeting life band official and facebook fleeting life i know you said it's kind of hard to find i'm gonna have to work on uh find making it easier but it's just fleeting life on facebook it's, as you said i think if you just look up fleeting life skull it's probably the best way to pop it up it, it i had to do it the other day for for the page that we just made recently it's something in like settings and then when you have like all your like about and stuff like that there's a there's a thing over here and you click the url and you can like do it once you have 100 followers it unlocks it um okay but Bale, dude, you're uh, listening <laughs> you can do that <laughs> yeah it's, it's possible <laughs> hell yeah uh my first question is who who is that you doing the craziest blah i've heard in a long time on on freddy krueger that's me was that was that uh like, whose idea was that to just be like, yo, we're breaking records on this one. We're going for the Guinness Book. <laughs> so my whole, I'm not a big Blaff fan, you know, as the song kind of suggests. What? But, <laughs> 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 but you know, that's kind of the idea of saying, how can I be unique and creative when all I want to, or when I, all everyone wants to hear is Blaff. So I, I, in turn, made it a very long and big Blaff. Right, which kind of backfired. <laughs> no, it's the best. It's, it's amazing. <laughs> no, I, I I had to grab it and put it as one of our buttons for the show, just just because of of it. If you guys are not familiar with what we're talking about, I'm gonna push that button real quick. This is off of Freddy Krueger. Fuck yeah! It's brutal. Hell yeah! Do you, when, who who? When Germ and I we're writing it together right i was like the only thing that's written is the breakdown everything else we can write but the break that was already like that was my main focus of the entire song before it was even fully finished who who inspired you to to want to pick up a microphone in the first place like uh, when you were younger so my biggest inspiration for sure is um chris motionless motionless and white like i will say because i kind of had a uh, like in school early high school everyone would be like oh you listen to screamo and like make fun of me when all i listened to was papa roach <laughs> you know and eventually well, wait, i think you know, two years ago <laughs> I'm just that's, kidding. that's funny it's a good like eight maybe right. but <laughs> 23 23 oh you're a youngin that's awesome but so um yeah i lost my train of thought hold on oh yeah but then like funnily enough Falling in Reverse was kind of my gateway, where, like, I liked their lighter songs, I didn't like their screamy songs, and eventually I liked their screamy songs, but only when, Ron, like, I could only listen to Ronnie screams, and then I found uh, Immaculate Misconception by Motionless and White, and, like, you know, that that was a fun, that was a fun time when my headphones got unplugged <laughs> by my friend. <laughs> Uh, what, what's, uh, what's something we can expect goal-wise from Fleeting regarding 2023? Like, is there stuff that you're you know, allowed to tell us? Sure. We, as of right now, we're doing a song every two months, a single. I think, you know, it kind of, because originally the idea was work on other songs in the background where releasing these singles keep us, like, relevant, you know? But as, as time, or I won't say as time, as the last three songs, I've, not really had time to work on other songs it's just been like this song this song this song you know we just had our new one released yesterday and i'm already on the next one <laughs> that's cool <laughs> you know Let's keep hustling yeah but uh the big the big goal for the year you know we're practicing uh we want to do live shows that's kind of like 
I, it's a lot. We're all like new to everything. We got a lot of equipment and a lot of shit to get together. But that's kind of the big goal is to, um, even if we aren't ready, ready to be more ready. <laughs> Have you ever played live in, in any previous project besides this man? This is the only project I, you know, I have some raps that are privated, and they will stay that way. <laughs> <laughs> but as far as, <laughs> as far as, uh, you know, band projects, I didn't want to release anything metalcore wise until I knew what I was doing, and so that was kind of the, um, that was kind of the goal. And we got there. Technically severed ties, if you wanted to consider it, you know, a different entity, but because I don't know if you knew. But originally the band name was Severed Ties, and we changed it to Fleeting Life. What was the reasoning behind that? Yeah, so um, origin when we originally made the band name, I did not know that another, um, I did not know that there was another band called Severed Ties. Ours was spelt different, and like, because the reason it was spelt the way it was is because in sixth grade that's how I spelled it. So I thought that was like a cool little thing, you know. But um, I did not as as time went on. Um, you know, you would look up the band severed ties, even spelled their way, and we would pop up. And I didn't want to bury another musician. You know, I wanted them to have their spot. Dang, and you so, said bury him too, like right? taking him out. Like that. <laughs> <laughs> I, I know what you mean. I know what you mean. Uh, Spaz, Spaz is my co-host today. Spaz Logan. Spaz, what's a what's a oh, question Spaz. or two that you Bro, have? Is, is is that a growlith tattoo? Pokemon. Yeah, we see some. Arm. We see some new it's ink close. right there too. It looks like Garchomp. on the inside. It, it was on the the inner arm. Yeah. So this is actually shit. I don't even know how to show this. It's actually Samus, but it's got a wrap on it. Right. I just got it yesterday. It looks fresh. Okay, that's why you can it, see. Yeah. The colors are popping hey, so, in it. Um, I, I guess. Let me see. Uh, there was a question. Uh, da, 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 I see you, Hard Moby. Give me a minute. Uh, crazy inhale. Ask about his crazy inhales, please. On Wendigo. Hey, you know, honestly, so I to hear someone say it sounds crazy. Thank you, because, you know, it took me I before the song came out because I thought it would be super cool for Wendigo. Right. Where like Wendigo is how they scream and how they sound is that of an inhale, you know. And so I was like, it'd be really cool to, you know, make that sound. And I no joke. I've dabbled in it before, but I learned it within like two weeks to do it for the song. I don't know. I will say. There was one rip because I re-recorded it a few times, and one of them really hurt. <laughs> so you pushed it and you inhaled. Yeah, I went a little too hard on that one. So I definitely have a because I know inhales are something that can like, you know, inhales can fuck you up. So right. I want to yep. make sure, you know, a lot. I don't know if I will do it again because if I do, I'm gonna have to practice and practice and practice. But It'll definitely worth it. I won't lie. It definitely, like, every time it hits in the car, I'm, like, just going at it. <laughs> You're like, yeah, so I, you, I killed that what one. Do you, what, do you <laughs> do to, what do you do to practice? Like, um, you could do all – Always, I'm a drummer, so, I, like, I don't yeah. give shit about vocals. But, like, what do you do to warm yourself up to hit – whatever it's going to be that if you're in a recording session that day where there's growls, screams, or just straight higher pitch type stuff, what do you do to prep yourself? So not to sound, you know, the way it's about to, I actually kind of don't. <laughs> I, it's one of those, like I've, I learned naturally. I don't even know, or not naturally, but like when I was 17, 18, I would scream every day in my car and, That'll also be something that never sees the light of day. Like I used to post them and be like, man, this sounds fucking fantastic. And I listen to them now. I'm like, Jesus Christ, some of the worst stuff to ever happen. <laughs> it's the best practice you sometimes for some people, though, is just that's how a lot of us would get practice. Just driving around, singing no, to the radio, screaming, whatever. That's what I was going to say is like sometimes because like I get busy. And so like there will be a few days I don't scream and growl and it sounds weaker. But then like in the car ride. I'll do it for a day or two and it gets right back to it. So I would say, honestly, just doing it. Like it, it's one of those things I wish I had some like vocal coaching on or like, cause I literally like people will be like, how do you do that? I'm like, I have no fucking idea. <laughs> just so know how to natural, do it. But do you ever worry about, uh, what is it? What do they call it? Uh, uh, vocal nodules, polyps. Do you ever worry about that? No, I will say, you know, cause 
I've been working a lot of my singing because that's definitely like the weakest area. And it's something that um, I've always wanted to be better at. And I've been I've that warm ups. I've been doing those every day, like, you know, I've been doing all the shit for that. But um, as far as screaming and growling goes, because once upon a time, it did hurt my throat. It doesn't anymore. Like I could scream and growl for an hour or two and like it'll feel a little dry. But as far as like pain or anything like that. I don't feel it unless I'm trying to do an inhale in my basement. <laughs> I, I got one more uh, BG. So yeah, that's cool. I, I like to scream a lot too. And I always say this to everybody that I uh, interview, but uh, except this question, have you ever been in practice or in a recording studio and you had to do like just a straight, the most guttural demonic type scream. And then you rushed out and threw up. So no, but I do have a funny story of, because I, I went to a uh, producer friend of mine, right? I went to his studio because I hadn't seen him in a while. I was like, fuck it. And that's actually where we recorded Skull. But he had an apprentice with him who hadn't, like, heard any screaming or growling or anything. And I walked – I you know, I go in there, and you can see through the glass. He's, like, just, like, looking all fucked up at me. <laughs> and then I walk out, you know, and my buddy – my um, buddy Cy, which is his name, you know, he was, like, killer as always, man. I was like – Thanks. And the guy's like, Oh, go ahead. I was gonna say uh, the last part of your answer. So you walked, got, got, uh, I didn't hear it. So you walked out and, and you looked at Sai and Sai said, you did awesome. And then I didn't hear after that. Yeah. And so the apprentice, the, the guy, he, you know, I was like, thanks, man. And the apprentice is like, you can fucking talk. <laughs> awesome. I, 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 <laughs> who is, uh, awesome. I mean, uh, w working with Chugaboom was probably awesome, I imagine. Perfect. I was actually just going to ask if I could answer that because I seen it over there. Yeah. <laughs> so, Levi, it was our first song. We had nothing, you know, and I just hit him up. I was like, hey, man, you know, Levi is one of the coolest fucking people ever. Like, he's he's so down to earth. He's fun to talk to. Also one of the funniest people ever, you know, but I sent him, um, I sent him the instrumental. We had it. And I was like, Hey man, this is what I got. You know, I would love to have you come out with a bang and I would love for you to be our first feature, you know? It, and, uh, he listened, or I had that a little weird, but I sent the instrumental after that. And he, um, he was like, that is the thickest shit I've ever heard. <laughs> I love it. Yeah. That's a good compliment. The uh, Levi and like, you know, he'll message me every now and then. I know. Um, oh, fuck. It's the guitar. They have because they're based off of all the like constellations. Oh, I feel really bad. But I know the guitarist always reaches out to fails. Leo. Leo always reaches out to fails. And he's like, love the new track. He sent a picture of him listening to entities when it came out or not picture video. Um, yeah, so they're super cool dudes. And honestly, if, if like we ever get the chance, cause I know they've been wanting to be invited over to the U S for tours and they're kind of waiting for that. And if we ever got to that point, they would be the first people, you know, I would ask to come over. That is awesome. Uh, Logan, who, who is, uh, let's do some trivia. Did you bring hot sauce? Of course I, you know, I did not prepare as much as I wanted to. So we got some sriracha here. Sriracha works. Ooh. It's got a little spice on it, just a little bit. Uh, I'll make sure to I'll make sure to get a lot of it. What movie <laughs> or TV show have you seen the most? So you know, I really thought about this, and this is gonna age me a little bit, okay? But <laughs> <laughs> but I thought about like what's a movie that I could like answer anything confidently, and I'm gonna answer it: the SpongeBob movie. There's like two or three though. The the, the most recent no, one that has first, Snoop in the it. The first one. It's called the SpongeBob movie. Okay. Spaz, I need a second. Ask him one more question. I'll be right back. So, uh, how long have you been doing this? Um, so doing like the band or screaming and growling in general? D vocals. Um, well, you know, there's pictures of me in sixth grade at a uh, recital. I used to take voice lessons in like fourth and fifth grade. Man, what I wouldn't give to sing like I did then. <laughs> Yeah, but 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 if you think about it, like, it, were you singing at a different capacity? Whereas now you're like, could be possibly different, you know? Oh, like... to be to be fair, I I was like, 
in six, you know, I was super young and I'm hitting high notes. So as a little kid, that's sure. kind of, I talk in high notes, <laughs> <laughs> you know? So, um, I'm getting there. The last song, the singing's better, not perfect, but it's close, you know? And I've been working, working, working. That's one where like on YouTube, you can actually find a fuck ton of like, um, you know, insight and like, you know, good vocal warm ups. Oh, there's a little bit of dissonance in my throat. How do I fix that? You know, where screaming and growling, I will say, I think it's a little more readily available now, but when I was mm-hmm. learning, not at all. What's that girl's? Is it Melissa Cross? Have you came up? Melissa, yeah. I, yeah. I, like the bee's knees of all screaming. Like, I mean, she's old as shit and she's got a DVD set. And Oh, I know who you're talking about. Yeah, I've seen it. I've watched it. to watch her. She's all like, Ugh. you're like, ah, oh, that's just she weird. She looking, helped Corey dude, Taylor. That's she what helped. I was gonna say. Yeah. As I remember when you were talking about old uh, tapes, I was like, "Oh yeah, you know, or old <laughs> DVDs." I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm I'm pretty sure this trivia is regarding the first movie. The first movie is the one where where they open a second Krusty Krab, right? Yes, correct. Okay, then this is your trivia, sir. Yeah. SpongeBob SpongeBob wants to be the manager of the second Krusty Krab so much. That he has the same dream over and over. What is the name of the fish that SpongeBob gives his cheese to? <laughs> he saves this fish in his dream because he was disappointed that Krabby Patty oh, didn't have any cheese. We're talking about okay, okay, hold on, because I was like, dream. What are we talking about? Okay, so, um, ah. Uh, it's one of two. I'm going to go Frank. What's the second one? Fred. Those are both incorrect. Fuck. Mm-hmm. You mm-hmm. have been stumped, mm-hmm. my friend. I will do a little bit of an easier. The answer is Phil. Damn it. Yo, because he's like, sorry, Phil. I just could, I couldn't get it in my head. Enjoy the, right. the hot sauce. I'll spin it and see what it lands on. Had you gotten it right anyway. If you're just tuning in, we're hanging out with Logan of Fleeting Life. Please support his band. Go on Spotify. Hit that follow button like I have. Support him. Look at that. And I got to take another shot. We'll just do another whiskey syringe shot because I poured too much in the glass. How about that? Uh, Logan, who's who's an artist that um, that you'd like to consider for a feature in the future? Well, they're a smaller band. I don't know if you've heard of them. Fear My Name is like a really big one. Yes, I, they're like, are they the rock and hip hop band? No, 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 no. So they made I'm like thinking Fear of Scared Street. of Fear. I'm sorry, Scared of Fear. Yeah, Fear Street, right? Um, they, They've made a couple songs, but Fear My Name is fucking badass. I love them. As Fear well as, okay. you know, if we were, because their band's always in and out and it kind of never works out. But I like, because Get Scared is also another big inspiration for me. And like to ever have Nick on a song would be absolutely insane. I have to look them up. I'm not familiar with them. Fear my name. If if all of a sudden a label comes along and drops like ten million dollars in your lap just just because they're crazy and you caught them on the right day, um, and you've taken care of your family, you've bought a bunch of gear. What's what's a crazy toy or two you're buying for yourself? <laughs> That's a great question. You know this is. I'm going to out myself a little bit as a nerd here, but I have a big GameCube collection and like, I've been trying to wow finish like it. You the know? actual GameCube or. Well, I do have some consoles, but mostly the games, like it's the console I grew up on. It was like my favorite. So I have, I eventually want to have one of everything that came out for that console. Nice. So that would probably be the first thing is just finishing that buying a lot of all of them and, haven't I imagine you I still have. have millions left after finishing. <laughs> yeah, <no. laughs> um, maybe I would start like it would be cool because it'd be a lot of work too. But if I had that much money, I could hire everybody to do it for me, so it doesn't fucking matter, you know. Maybe start up not not warp tour, but something along the lines. You know, I went to the last one and it was like me too. a hell of a time. The o- the only time you'll see me, you know. Going fucking crazy to Chelsea Grin at 11 a.m. Was that was that your <laughs> only Warp Tour experience? The last one? It was. I I was freshly 18 at the last Warp Tour. Awesome. 
I've made every bad bad decision you can ever make at Warp Tour. I've I've gone probably to like seven of them, and uh, one of the like the first or second, probably the second one, they had free Monster Energy drinks all day, and I was like, well, dude, every time I'm thirsty, I'm just go get a Monster Energy drink, and I'm telling you, I used to live in South Florida. And the humidity and the heat and the combo of the energy drink just like beat, beat the shit out of me by like 3 p.m. And I had to like sit down and like cool off and relax. And I was just too, my heart's racing. I was like, bro, get it together, man. We got to go see story of the year on stage three at 3 p.m. Blah, blah, or whatever the case may be. But <laughs> hell yeah. Um, it's so funny because I also like just really quick. I also do have a, that warp tour. I had never even heard of wage war before this. Right? Holy shit, was, wait for I, fuck yeah. I was freshly into like metalcore. Like I was there for motionless and white and ice nine kills. Those were like my big ones, you know? And uh fucking I seen we see Wage War and all the I thought a crowd surfer, like initially, you know, because it knocked me out for like the rest of the day. Like I was winded, I felt fucked up. And like I thought a crowd surfer landed on my head and like but after the show this guy taps me on the shoulder, and he's like, hey, Wage War kind of gets me going. I'm sorry for punching you there. And I was like, what? Oh, damn. <laughs> damn so he punched you in the back of the head? Yeah. That f- <laughs> I got a question, BJ. This one this one might be a little <clears> – <throat> uh, just answer it however you feel. Would you rather go on a – let's just say for the argument's sake, 10-state uh, tour with a national or – would you rather go on a 10 state tour where you're the headliner and bring two bands of your choice that you that are your brothers, your homies? Like from what it it, it didn't have to be the same state. But you only right. get one gig of the national? You, no, no. So you would get 10 let, let's just say argument's sake. Let's just say you could you could tour 10 states with wage war. Or okay. Uh, we're not talking money or none of that stuff. Or you could tour those same 10 states with two other bands that you're the headliner. What would you do? Ooh. I know it's hard. It is hard. It, the national. Because at the end of the day, bringing on, like setting up my own set list or not set list. Sorry. Like a bands. Stage you know? No, all that, all that shit's taken care of. Like for you, Let, let's just say, uh, all your texts will do it, that in the national. Right. I mean, would you rather, argument's sake, let's just go five figure death punch. I mean, granted, I would love to tour with those dudes, but would you support people below you or would you just rather take the tour? I, I know it's a very hard question. I get what you're saying. So, like, I'm a I starving artist have... myself, so that's why I asked. Germ is one of my very good friends, and he's kind of really one of the only smaller artists in my, like, circle you know sorry if i'm forgetting anybody by the way <laughs> but i would probably like because if it was just him and i on a show i would do that right i don't really have like a third okay but you know and also believe it or not even though like kind of um goes against bands and whatnot i'm not that big of a traveler you know i'll get there and it'll be for music it's one thing you know, I'll live in a van with five sweaty dudes. That sounds awesome. You know, but it's a stinky good um, time. <laughs> it sucks, yeah. but yeah. <laughs> as far as like traveling, um, as far as like you know going out of the country, it's something I have not yet considered. So I definitely would probably do the in the. Well, US. if 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 you were going out of the country, I, I mean myself included I'm, I'm in a band in california I, I would go with the national to pull us along but w- w- it was just like you decide you know there there comes the time where you have uh i wouldn't say groupies per se but you have friends that you've been in the industry with for years maybe you made it they didn't hey can you help us can you help us logan can you bring us along that type of stuff so i right. mean it's like our heads don't get that big but yet we still remember where we came from. So, I mean, it is a toss up. I mean, if, if they were paying you the full ride, I mean, mm. I guess, you know, at the end of the day, because when I heard national, I'm a fucking idiot. You're not talking about global. You're talking no. about, <laughs> I'm talking about like an EMI, BMI or whoever the fucking your top dogs, uh, like everybody. That's a tough question. Us. No, plus like if, if we were 
let's say we're um opening for like these huge bands mm -hmm. um that would be a lot for me <laughs> you know i'm a very anxious so your person. first show is in front of five thousand people yeah i i don't know if i could uh I don't know if I I would definitely have to take a shot or two and I don't even drink. <laughs> I'd always heard I'd always heard rumors that 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 the used got signed without ever playing a show. Like they they got signed by like an actual like like a Sony or somebody like that. I forget who it was. But uh I'd always heard rumors that they they submitted their their entire like demoed album and they signed them and they finished it and they were like boom, here's your first show and it's like 700 people. So like, right. which is kind of scary. I would think, if, especially if you're not used to performing all the time, I feel like that'd be kind of creepy and scary. But uh, uh, so, Chad wants yeah. to know what's the most insane thing that's ever happened in a show to all three of us, and I think it has to be something we played. But yeah, I guess that, I'm sorry. I guess that wouldn't apply to Logan because he's coming up on his first show. But uh, just aside from getting punched in the back of the head, being a participant, what's another crazy story at any gig you've ever been to? Um, that's kind of the one I always tell. There's definitely like another one or two. Like I know, so for instance, there was a, of all bands, I've seen Papa Roach the most. I've seen him about 13 times. Have you met, <laughs> you've probably met Jacoby, I would imagine at some point. I fucking wish. I wish. Tortilla I slap, Jacoby. tortilla we challenge. Had, we had a chance and it was at Mayhem Fest in 2013. And, uh, we, it like started thunderstorming. And so they closed down the tent and it, it was unfortunate. Um, but um, there is this one show. He sets up the wall of death, right? I know Papa Roach setting up the wall of death. But there was this, there is this girl right next to us. And she's like, you know, she's like, I can handle, you know, I'm ready. I can handle it. And like somebody spilled their beer along the way. And she fucking, when it hit, she flew like, <laughs> I don't even know, probably like four feet into the air and went, whoop, and hit she the went. ground. <laughs> <laughs> I, just I remember being, because I was like 16, 17 at the time, and this is my first wall of death experience. I was like, oh, fuck. <laughs> you know? They get and I crazy. See that, I'm like, yeah, I see that. I'm like, oh, I'm fucked here. <laughs> mine, mine, I'll make it short, is... uh. When I was in a band, I had a, a, a bassist that was in two bands, and he booked a second show the same night at, that we were playing. And the entire time, like he's like, "We should be, we need to be on stage soon, doing like this." And mid set, this mother unplugs all of his gear and is like, "I'm sorry, guys, I have to go play this other show." We kicked him out of the band that night, but <laughs> but like literally, you're watching us play. And there was probably like seven or eight people there, nothing crazy. And everyone was just like, what does this dude do? Did he just quit live while they're playing? And we finished the whole set and everything. We were like, dude, you just can't do that. Like, finish. We probably had like three songs left. Anyway, that's mine. Bro, I got one for you. It's, it's so embarrassing. God damn it. But uh, we, we were playing. It, it, unfortunately, it was the last song that we played with our, our former singer. Uh, we were going up to play the Broken Ones, and uh, actually before the set had started, since I use the SPDSX, backing tracks, triggers, all that stuff, we couldn't get that. Um, the sample pad wouldn't work, and I couldn't figure out why, because I normally run all the IAM rigs and all that stuff, and I, I didn't recognize the number was wrong, whatever. So we get to the ending of the set, because we can play all of our songs without the backing tracks regardless, and it was the Broken Ones. And <laughs> fucking Ant-Man's like, bro let's play it so we we start i'm like trying to click them in and i'm like dude i don't understand what song it is and he's like bro fucking play it and i've got inners in so i can't hear him he's just mouthing he's like this what and i'm like dude dude what i don't know what the fuck i played and i just looked at rob i'm like just just get in the chorus find me somewhere just i'm just playing like we played i don't even know what the hell we played and everybody loved it and i'm like Oh, this was horrible. It was our newest single that we couldn't even figure out what the hell. The, it was my fault because I, I, I forgot. We you get, know, it was, it, it was so embarrassing. We got time for three more questions, Logan. The first one is going to be a little more trivia. Oh, yeah. In SpongeBob the movie, what color does Patrick love being changed into? Purple. Of course, it's purple. Yeah, hell yeah. <laughs> 
I had to give you an easy one for the second one because I stumped you the first time. Hey, the third one, make it. I'm telling you, the first one stumped me. I, I'm down for that. Damn it. Put it in your beer. So much fourth one I have is Magma Mount Fuji. So I'm going to do that. Uh, got time for two more questions. Spaz, give him a serious one. A million dollars or be a starving musician? So a million dollars and don't do music or... Forever. I'm cool with the starving musician life. You know, money at the end of... And that's like a cliche, like, oh, if a million dollars is in front of me, I might change my tune. <laughs> Understood. <laughs> you know? But like, but, what, what else like, would you do? Here you go. Like, we all have a calling. Like, some of us choose music. So it's like... You have a million dollars, you never have to work again for the rest of your life, or would you rather just slave on stage making peanuts and it, being happy? You know, with me not really doing a live show yet, um, maybe I get up there and I like shit my pants, which I probably will <laughs> at least the first couple of shows, you know. But I'm, I'm sure over time I will grow to love it. And I know and I not even grow to love it. I'm excited to do it. Don't get me wrong on that. But definitely a little anxious about it as well. So bring an extra yeah. pair of underwear just in case. The thought of people on the thought that's funny, but the thought of people, um, you know, singing back to me or not even seeing us before and shit their pants at the Freddy Krueger bleh, I look forward to it. Yeah, that's awesome. cool. Uh, <laughs> final question for you, sir, and I ask everybody this question, but um, what what is have you? I'm not sure how many or, or industry people you've met in your entire life. Maybe Chug a Boom gave you some advice, but what is a piece of advice that you could share with us for maybe a small band that's watching that um, you just like to share as far as musical experience or advice? You know, just do it. It's one of those like it took me a while because especially going to full sale, I kind of learned the ins and outs of like, cause I didn't really get to finish school cause COVID hit. And then I had to learn pro tools online and I was like, fuck that. <laughs> you know so it's hard bro it's yeah. hard I, i'm with pro you. tools is like ugh. i'm a logic guy just like uh, so you Taylor. know i want to expand on that so you know the crazy schedule that entailed by going to full sale the yes, four sir. hour blocks and like the two in the morning and all that weird stuff did you go on campus as well i did and i did the two years and 13 Beautiful months campus. and i got pro tools certified so i actually had to go do additional time while there so like uh even though we had our blocks like to get certified there was like more classes you could do and i did all that stuff so it was impossible to have a job while i went there so i, I i'm kind of uh new to this what is full sale I went it's to a, both yeah it's it's a uh music college some <laughs> so it's considered one of the best you know um i looked into berkeley but especially for what i was wanting to do Berkeley kind of wasn't it, you know. Mm -hmm. and Did you look into Belmont? I have not heard of that, to be honest. <laughs> so, like Belmont and Full Sail are, are like the consider the two, and it's Belmont's in Nashville, and I thought about going there, but because Full Sail's in Florida and I'm from Florida, I was like, I could just drive up and down from like parents' house and stuff for visiting reasons. But um, right, Logan, this was a lot of fun, man. I appreciate it. As soon as we let oh, you yeah. go, we are going to jam. Uh, uh, should we do POS or what do you think? Um, so Windigo's the newest. It's not Spotify. It always takes a second to get there. If you check it up on YouTube, it'll be there. Um, but Are you on Facebook, I did... Logan? Yeah, uh, Logan Thomas. You'll see it in the description. Or you know, fleeting life vocalist. Got it right but, there. Um, I did the one thing I wanted to end off on that question. You know, um. Because going to Full Sail found me, um, you know, helped me understand producing a lot more and helped me find, because like half is produced um, by us, half is the producers, right? Where like, I'll write a chorus and I'll, we'll do this and that. And then um, I'll send it to the producers and they kind of touch it up. Because with me not finishing, I still have some work. I've gotten a lot better, you know, songs have, but finding a producer and um, it's pretty big, especially to get that like, it's and finding one that also like understands you and like because i've definitely been through one or two where like i'd get something back and i'd be like no <laughs> you know but we finally got there and like um yeah just like go out 
if if music's what you want to do, there's always a way. You know, there's always a way to figure it out. Um, YouTube is a hell of a help nowadays. I just like suck at learning things online, which is why COVID hitting and me having to go home for full sale just kind of ruined that. <laughs> It's all good, but uh, you got you got enough out of it to be able to do some self-producing to get Correct. to where you need to do. It's to... how I learned. Oh, I didn't mean to cut you off. Oh, no, you're good. You're good. But it's how I learned um, music production. A lot of like, because there's the mixing, mix engineer side of things, huh. and then there's the, uh, you know, production side of things. And the first couple months, you kind of do them together. So I did learn a lot of like, you know, cool vocal tricks and how to like sing a little quieter, sing a little higher in the background and, you know. I did learn for the six months I was there, I learned a lot. And I definitely, you know, for anyone looking into Full Sail, it is a fucking grind. It is like you're there. You get a bachelor's degree in like two years. So you're you're there every day grinding. Less than that. But, Less yeah. than two years. They cram it all into like one year and like a couple of months. Yeah. But but it is hard though because you got like that critical listening where you got to pick out where the bass player is. They're the four spatial. hour. They're four hour classes. Like, yeah, yeah four hour classes every day, and like you know Ooh. one one month you're doing nine a.m. to five, and then right the next day and the next month you're doing like twelve to three a.m. <laughs> like literally, you go to school at like midnight. Yeah. And that's when you start your first class. Like they, it's so weird, but that's how they are able to like let everybody use the gear and stuff. Logan, this was a lot of fun, man. I appreciate you stopping by. Shout out Fleeting Life. Please follow them oh, yeah. on on Spotify, on YouTube, whatever you can. This is an absolute pleasure, sir. I'm gonna throw this on YouTube later tonight. Ladies and gentlemen, Logan Thomas of Fleeting Life! Give me a hell yeah. Thank you. It was an honor. Have yourself an excellent day, dude. Thank you. Guys as well. I was only able to stump you once. <laughs> That's okay. Take care, brother. Have Cheers, dude. Guys.